Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is in continuation with the hematopathology series. I will be discussing a very important topic in leukemias that is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So we will in the next 15-20 minutes we will talk about the epidemiology, the pathogenesis, the morphology, the clinical features, treatment and prognosis of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We have learnt about acute myeloid leukemia in our earlier session, right? Let's learn about acute lymphoblastic leukemia. What is ALL? Acute lymphoblastic leukemia or acute lymphoblastic lymphoma. These are neoplasms of immature B or T cells, okay? They can be pre-B or pre-T cells. Neoplasms of immature B or T cells and these immature cells, they are called as lymphoblasts. Okay, they could be B lymphoblasts or T lymphoblasts. 85% of BALLs present as childhood leukemias, whereas T cell acute lymphoblastic lymphomas, they present as thymic lymphomas usually in the adolescents. They are not a childhood neoplasms. If you see a lymphoid neoplasm in childhood, it is most often BALL. Okay? Epidemiology, most common cancer of children, usually less than 15 years. Boys are more frequently affected as compared to girls. Peak incidence of B, type, B cell type of ALL is around less than 3 years of age. As I told you, peak incidence of T ALL is in adolescence. Let us understand the pathogenesis of acute lymphoblastic lymphoma or acute lymphoblastic leukemia. All acute lymphoblastic leukemias arises due to genetic mutations. Okay? These genetic mutations affect key transcription factors involved in the normal development of B and T lymphocytes. Now what exactly happens? There is maturation arrest, there could be increased proliferation or self renewal. When I say maturation arrest, which means the cells fail to differentiate into further stages. Okay. When I say increased proliferation or self renewal, which means the cells retain or the cells will have a stem cell like behavior. Both of these features result in early precursor cells that now behave like immortal clones. Okay. Because there is extensive proliferation, uninhibited proliferation, it basically results in crowding of the marrow that affects the normal hematopoiesis. Okay, so that is the basic pathogenesis of acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. Let us see what are the common mutated genes involved in B cell ALL and T cell ALL. Let's, firstly, let us talk about B cell ALL. The genes involved are PAX5, TCF3, ETV6, RUNX1, BCRABL1, the Philadelphia chromosome which we learnt in chronic myeloid leukemia. KMT2A and PBX1. Okay, So, these are the ones which help in proper differentiation of early hematopoietic precursors. Whenever any of these genes are mutated, it results in maturation arrest. Right? That is how acute lymphoblastic leukemia occur. The genes involved in the implication of T-cell ALL are the NOTCH1 gene, which normally is essential for T-cell development. Whenever there is mutation of this particular gene, it results in T-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma. Now, why do we need to know the differences between or the genes involved, the differences between B cell and T cell ALL? That is because both B cell and T cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, they resemble similar. They look similar under morphological features. They look similar when you examine under peripheral blood smear or the bone marrow examination, but they are genetically and clinically distinct. That is very important. How are they clinically distinct? I told you BALL occurs in childhood whereas TALL they manifest in adolescence. Right? Now let us see the multi-step nature of leukemogenesis. ALL do not just result from one mutation. Okay? That means there is mutation in the transcription factor as I told you earlier. They are the ones which initiate the process of leukemia. Okay? It is not sufficient alone. Just one mutation will not result in leukemia. You need to have driver mutations. 
Now, what are those driver mutations? For example, tyrosine kinase activating mutations. The most common example we talk about is BCR ABL fusion in Philadelphia positive ALL. It could be RAS pathway mutations. These are the driver mutations which helps in progression of the leukemia. That's what we call, a, call as leukemogenesis. The second important abnormality what we see is the chromosomal abnormalities. What are the chromosomal abnormalities in ALL? 90% of ALL show numerical or structural chromosomal abnormalities. For example, hyperdiploidy, okay, which means greater than 50 chromosomes has a good prognosis. Hypodiploidy, less than 44 chromosomes, poor prognosis. It's very important to know whether the ALL is hyperdiploidy or hypodiploidy because prognostically it's very important to categorize. Okay. Structural abnormality include balanced translocation. Basically, there is resulting in fusion of the genes. For example, ETV RUNX1 fusion, BCR ABL1, TCF3 and PBX1 fusion. These are the translocations which are observed in acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Very important to know these kind of translocations, these kind of chromosome abnormalities because that are they are important for diagnosis, they are important for risk stratification and they are very, very important for targeted therapy, right? That's why you need to know whether the leukemia is involving the chromosomal abnormality, either numerical or structural abnormalities. Okay, so what did we see? Maturation arrest plus self-renewal is what results in leukemia, right? There is accumulation of lymphoblasts in the bone marrow resulting in suppression of the normal hematopoiesis. Once the normal hematopoiesis is suppressed, what happens? There can be anemia, there can be neutropenia, there can be thrombocytopenia. All the clinical manifestations are because of these three things. It's not because of lymphoblasts, it's because of suppression of the normal hematopoiesis resulting in anemia, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. Okay, so sometimes the lymphoblasts or the leukemic cells, they can spill over to the blood, CNS, lymph nodes and other tissues. Initially, it's, it begins in the bone marrow, then spill over to the blood, it can extend into the CNS or it can extend into the lymph node or it can extend into any other tissues as well. That is how the progress of leukemia takes place. Morphologically, in the peripheral smear, as I told you, you will have anemia. You can see leukocytosis increase in white cell count. Most of them are, will be premature cells. It, there will be decrease in the neutrophil, that's neutropenia, decrease in the platelet count, thrombocytopenia. Okay. Morphology in the bone marrow, what you see, it's hypercellular, packed with what? Packed with lymphoblasts. Now, how do you appreciate lymphoblasts? These are the cells, large cells, with a scant basophilic cytoplasm and the nuclei which are slightly larger than those of small lymphocytes. For a naive person, it's very difficult. Sometimes it is difficult to appreciate that these are lymphoblasts. Okay, they are slightly larger than the small lymphocytes. They have a very delicate and a finely stippled nuclear chromatin. Okay, that is very important in contrast to myeloblasts. Okay, these lymphoblasts, they have delicate chromatin, finely stippled nuclear chromatin and the nucleoli are very small. They are sharply demarcated by a thin rim of condensed chromatin. Very small, inconspicuous nucleoli. Okay, that's how a lymphoblast look. We, I have discussed in detail about the differences between lymphoblast and myeloblast in my earlier video. You can go through that. Sometimes you can also see convolutions of the nuclear membrane because of deep division. Okay, that is also a feature of lymphoblast. Okay, so sometimes you can see these convolutions of the nucleus. That is also a feature of the lymphoblast in the bone marrow or the peripheral smear. Okay, histopathologically, very characteristic pattern you see is the starry sky pattern, which means all these, you know, vacuolated cells. They are basically the interspersed macrophages which are ingesting the apoptotic tumor cells. Okay. Amidst the lymph, all these are lymphoblasts and in between lymphoblasts you find those clear areas, lighter areas. They are basically macrophages. They look like as if you are looking at stars in the sky. That's why it's called starry sky pattern. Okay. And it is very important to differentiate ALL from AML because the treatment is different in both of these neoplasms. You can make out a diagnosis of acute leukemia, but you need to differentiate whether it is acute lymphoblastic 
or whether it is acute myeloid leukemia. Okay, for that we need to do a special stain. Morphologically, if you can identify whether it is a lymphoblast or myeloblast, it's good. But if you cannot identify, do a special stain. Firstly, do a special stain. What special stain? Per iodic acid shift reagent. Okay. If you stain these lymphoblasts, they stain positive for periodic acid shift reagent. It's called block positivity. Can you see this? All these is the thick block positivity of the lymphoblast in ALL. Okay. But the definitive diagnosis is often by flow cytometry because you can find antibodies specific for B and T cell antigens can be identified in your flow cytometry. For example, in this illustration, you can see that in this flow cytometry chart, you can see that it's positive for CD22 and TDT and CD19 and CD10, which means that you're looking at B cell neoplasms. Okay. Similarly, you can make out that some of these tumors will be positive for pan B cell marker if it is a B cell ALL. For example, CD19, if it is a T cell ALL, it is positive for CD1, CD2, CD5 and CD7. So that is why it is important to differentiate whether it is B ALL or T ALL. That can only happen by means of immunophenotyping. Okay. How do ALL manifest are present to you? Clinically, though ALL and AML are genetically, phenotypically different, features are similar. Why? That's because of, we have seen that the leukemic cells, whether it is a lymphoblast or a myeloblast, they actually flood the normal bone marrow, suppress the hematopoiesis, cause anemia, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia, right? So most often these patients manifest abruptly, stormy onset, onset because they can present with depression of marrow function. If it is anemic, they present with fatigue. If it is neutropenia predominantly, they can present with fever because of infections. Thrombocytopenia manifests as bleeding, okay? All this is because of the suppression of normal hematopoiesis. This can be manifestation of acute leukemias. Sometimes they can also have mass effects. For example, bone pain can be seen. That's because of the sub expansion of the bone marrow and infiltration into the subperiosteum. Okay, so patient can present with sternal pain or any bone pain for that matter. They can present with generalized lymphadenopathy. They can present with spinomegaly, hepatomegaly, and even testicular enlargement in case of ALL. Rarely, meningeal spread can also be seen, which is more common in ALL than AML. Okay, so headache, vomiting, and nerve palsies are the manifestation of meningeal spread of acute lymphoblastic leukemias. Now, how do you treat ALL? Aggressive chemotherapy often will be curative because 95% of children with ALL of, of obtain a complete remission and 75 to 85 percent of children with ALL are actually cured. So that is the importance of knowing whether you are dealing with ALL or AML because AML is not curable. ALL can be curable in 75 to 85 percent of cases. Prognosis, we need to know what are the good prognostic factors and the worst prognostic factors. The firstly, we'll talk about favorable prognostic factors. If the patient is somewhere between 2 and 10 years of age, a very low white cell count, hyper diploidy, we saw this earlier, right? More than 50 chromosomes, good prognosis. Trisomies of chromosome 4, 7 and 10. The presence of translocation 12, 21. Translocation which generates the ETV RUNX1 fusion gene. All these are favorable prognostic factors. Now, what are the worst prognostic factors? Any child less than two years with ALL, worse prognosis. If there is meningeal involvement, worse prognosis. If the presentation is in adolescence or adulthood, worse prognosis. And the peripheral blood blast counts greater than 1 lakh, which means that you are dealing with a very high tumor cell burden, right? So that carries a worse prognosis. So there are a subset of tumors which contain activating mutations in tyrosine kinases like BCR, ABL. And these are the patients which are important targets for therapy. When you have these kind of mutations, treating these patients is very much important, very much easier by means of targeted therapy. Okay. So that's all about ALL. We talked about the epidemiology, the pathogenesis, the morphology, clinical features, treatment and even a bit about prognosis of ALL. So that completes today's topic. In my next session, I will be discussing another important lymphoid neoplasms that is chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Till then, stay tuned. Bye-bye.